Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Nail Logical podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Hollow Taco. <gasps> Do you have boring nails? Just add a Hollow Taco, and it's not a problem anymore. Good right? line, Ben. <laughs> I don't. I'm not reading any copy here. I'm just <laughs> riffing. Like Hollow Taco just released a, a seven piece rainbow linear hollow collection. Yeah. And uh, we sold out of the collection box very quickly. So thank you, yeah. everyone who bought it. There's still individual colors left. And even the ones we've sold out of, we have all the raw materials. We're going to be trying to restock them and remake those polishes very quickly. But I think more than an ad read, we just want to say thank you for yeah. all the support and for everyone who bought. Hello, everyone. <laughs> haven't said hi yet. I, yeah, it's been a crazy weekend. Uh, we just had launch weekend. It's been amazing. You guys are going wild over the rainbow colors and you want all seven of them so mm -hmm. there is no unfavorite color in the rainbow <laughs> everyone wants them all and we're working hard to make more i'm so excited you guys have seen this collection on my nails in this podcast for months now like people have pointed it out mm -hmm. so i think it's kind of funny if you look back in episodes people are like what's that orange she's wearing <laughs> so yeah. it's, it, it's really rewarding to see how mm -hmm. well this went especially just knowing how long this has been in the works and how many challenges there have been as a business many due challenges. to things going yeah. on in the world. So. so it's so exciting, relieving, and just like mentally exhausting in a good way mm -hmm. to finally come out with this and be like, yes, it's here. Mm -hmm. And you guys love it. I hope you love it when you get it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited. So thank you. Okay. But today's episode isn't about Holo Taco. No. Although I will <laughs> note, we, we see the comments wanting an entire podcast dedicated to how you started Holo Taco. Yeah, we'll definitely do we that. We are going yeah. to do that soon. It's just, yeah, one of those ones we want to be more careful about, you know, what we talk about from like a business legal perspective and things like that, right? It's a complex. Hollow is complex. <laughs> Zyler's blocking my face. Zyler, sit down. There we go. <laughs> okay. So today's episode is about high school. So we know this is a time of year where a lot of people would be celebrating the end of the school year. A lot of people should be feeling like they're graduating high school right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Yeah, it's obviously we feel for people who are going through, it's, it's, it's a weird time to be graduating, right? Yeah. So I know YouTube just had their class of 2020 thing, which I thought was a really smart and nice thing Here's of them a nice to, thing do. to do. Yeah. Nice gesture, yeah. But uh, we thought it would be a good time to, you know, talk about our high school experience or take audience questions as well about just advice or whatever, whatever questions you guys have about high school. I think you'll find that Christine and I have probably pretty different answers because we had very different high school experiences. Which is a good thing because then we kind of balance it out. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, we both went to high school in Ontario. I went to high school here in Ottawa at Lisger Collegiate Institute right in downtown Ottawa. And I went to French Immersion High School in Richmond Hill, Ontario, mm -hmm. which is a suburb just north of Toronto. And I look back fondly on high school. I had a, a good friend group. I, I have good memories of high school. And I'm even friends with some people I went to high school with. And I think Christine didn't quite have the same experience. I'm glad I'm out of high school. <laughs> well, I'm also glad I'm <laughs> sure. not in high school anymore. But I, I don't look back fondly. And I don't also just want to be completely negative this entire episode mm -hmm. because I don't want to discourage people who are currently not having a good time in high school. But I also think it's okay to recognize that sometimes like life experiences are bad and then they get better. So if anything, I'm an example of someone who didn't have a good time mm -hmm. <laughs> during high school and things got better. Ben had a good time during high school and things are still good. <laughs> and things are worse. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But we, yeah. we just ha happen to have very opposite experiences. So that's why we also thought this would be an interesting podcast for you guys. Yeah. And maybe we should say right up front, you know, I think you don't have to share the intimate details about why high school was a really mm -hmm. hard time for you. You, like, you don't owe that to anyone mm -hmm. if you don't want to talk about it. But at the same time, I know there's probably a lot of young girls in particular listening to this who are probably really hate high school for maybe a lot of the same reasons you did. And even without getting specifically into like 
the worst aspects of high school for you, just for them to see how like accomplished you are as a young woman, knowing that you also hated life in high school yeah might mean a lot to those people in terms of seeing like there's on the other side of this I can have good outcomes even if my life kind of sucks right now yeah and another reason why I'm doing this is not for my own therapy because I'm actually like I'm kind of over it I don't care to discuss the awful things that I feel like that I went through in high school Mm -hmm. um it's not fun for me too. I've never really talked about it and I don't want to go into much detail because it's not helpful to me. Like I'm a totally different person now and I'm happy about that. Uh, but I also recognize like what Ben just said, that if some of you guys out there are struggling, maybe in some way it does help to see someone that you look up to or appreciate. You know, I'm just an entertainer online, but I know what you, mm-hmm. a lot of you guys like, you know, like to hear my opinions and perspectives on things to, to hear that, yeah, like shit was tough for me too, but I, I got out of it. So mm-hmm. that's all. You're good. Positive spins. <laughs> Positive vibes. <laughs> all right. Let's just get right into the questions then because there were a lot this of This is them. a test. This is our first high school test. <laughs> Pop in, quiz. In 10 years. All right. First question from Elise on Twitter. Oh, hi, Elise. You brought her up on stage. Yeah, at, what uh, up? I painted VidCon. her nails on stage at VidCon. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Uh I'm going into high school in the fall, and I don't know anyone going to my school. Any advice for someone starting someplace new? So Hmm. I thought this was a good first question because, yeah, it's... Do you remember what that feeling was of, like, okay, I'm going to high school? Very scary. Yeah. And I think I had a couple friends in common who were the same friends coming from elementary school, and we had, like, planned out our outfits, and Mm -hmm. it was all about what you were going to wear, Oh, yeah? Yeah, was the focus. <laughs> I don't remember worrying yeah, yeah, about you that. Yeah, you didn't care about that. But um, I mostly, it was mostly new people when I went to high school yeah. because it was so many more people than yeah, the school. You, most I people, before, yeah. I think in Canada, it's probably more common. A lot of people go to like a grade seven, eight only school or... They also call that middle school, Middle maybe? school, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, I also went from like a much smaller school until all of a sudden high school feels very feels, big. Yeah, scary. I have to admit, I also had like a pretty big friend group that went from grade eight into the same high school as me. So I can't mm-hmm. say I can relate to feeling like I'm brand new. Although way back in grade school, like I had lived in Australia a bit as a kid and then I came back to Canada and all of a sudden in like grade six, I guess, I was all of a sudden the new kid in class who didn't have any friends. I think one, like practical, I like practical advice. Oh, <laughs> so the I think, logistician yeah, the lo- did you watch our personality <laughs> podcast? I think for me, what helped a lot was even though I did have a couple friends, high school is a completely new experience in terms of where your classes, what time do you have to go to this? And you're, you have to be more responsible all of a sudden for knowing where to go and when, and the building is larger and everything is so confusing. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot harder to do when you don't have friends to kind of just like rely on and figure it out. So one thing you can do on your own is plan for where are you going? How do you get to where you go? Maybe go to school early, scope out the classes, look at your timetable and kind of see what you have to do that day and how you're going to get there. And personally, I find familiarizing myself with where classrooms are and knowing where I got to be on time helps calm me down and prepare me so that I'm not like freaking out last minute about where do I go? Cause that's, that's a, a huge stress all off the bat. So yeah. planning in advance and kind of mentally preparing, I think even on your own is helpful. I mean, if you're lucky, you'll just make friends by virtue of the fact that you're in class with people with similar interests and values to you. And, and maybe you just there's end up other people, people there that sitting, sitting there early in class just like you. But there's like no guarantee of that either, right? I would say when I look back on high school, the best friends I had were people who I did stuff with not in class, but like extracurricular type activities, right? Like uh, some of my best friends were the guys I played volleyball with on the volleyball team or the people I played in the senior jazz band with, you know? So but I how think, did you get to know them? Well, in a lot of cases, it's from in signing class. up to do those activities, so right? So getting involved. Yeah. So something. like get involved in the things you're interested in. Maybe it's theater and all of a sudden you'll be in the sort of theater group of kids. Those hmm. kids are always fun. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if there's like YouTube clubs now. Yeah, they, yeah. Join, just hang out with all We're the students of, who want of, to be YouTubers. Of theater clubs, but maybe there's like YouTube and social Actually, media arts. This, I don't this know. is a good point. Our high school, we graduated high school in 2005, 
six, something like something that. Like... <laughs> Feels like a long time ago, and in some ways it is, right? Because I wonder how different high school is now compared to what it was for us. And yeah. we, this might just come up naturally in our conversation, but I saw a Reddit thread not long ago where like someone was just asking like, uh, high school kids today, how do you think high school is different than it was for people 10, 20 years ago? And I saw an answer that really stuck out to me about how things are less clicky. Maybe that's not true across the board, but I think the answer was intimating that so much of people's social lives is is lived online now, mm-hmm. and it very much changes the sort of social hierarchy you actually see in person within yeah. a school. I don't know if that's true or not. I'd, I'd love to hear comments from people today who are in high school and like, how 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 is it different? I guess they wouldn't know what it was like for us. But Yeah, like is the popular group in part largely determined by their followings on social media? Maybe. Yeah, maybe, right? Because that, that didn't exist when we were young. So I guess a way of asking is like when you watch old movies about high school, how crazy do they look? Like what, what do you have a favorite <laughs> high school movie? Or is there a movie uh, I mean, like that... they're all kind of trashy. I don't want to say like my favorite, but. But is there a high school movie that you think kind of captures the spirit of what high school was like for us? I can only think of bad ones. Okay. <laughs> no, you don't have to say. <laughs> Dark to, ones. To me, super bad mm. is like, yeah, it's American and not everything is accurate. But when I saw that, when I think it was came out towards the end of us being in high school, I actually sort of recognized, it, it kind of captured the spirit of what it was like to be in high school at the time. So if you want to do your research on what high school was like <laughs> with no social media, watch Superbad. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, good luck in high school, Elise. Keep your head up. <laughs> uh, f- next question. Were you part of any high school type cliques? Uh, or clicks, goth, emo, nerdy, jock, etc. Simply on my own. <laughs> were you, you were really a loner in high school, eh? I mean, that's not completely true. I had small friend groups. Um, I was really into like Avril Lavigne. So if you want to go by style, if you want to classify people by style, which was a huge thing sure. at the time, like just how you dressed and what music you listened to. I went through an Avril Lavigne phase where mm-hmm. I would wear like hot pink and black or like mesh maybe or zippers on my pants. Do giant. you wear ties? Do you ever wear ties? Not, not really. I didn't get into ties, <laughs> but I wore like giant cargo pants with chains all over oh, my yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was like the opposite of what all the popular pretty girls wore. So did you hang out with other people that dressed that way? You know... Not really. not really. I think I was the the most like punkish. I don't know if that's oh, that's wow. probably not the best word because I mm-hmm. wasn't really that. <laughs> um, but I just really loved that kind of angsty style, even though that attitude wasn't reflected in my behavior. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really a rebel. Like I wasn't rebelling. I wasn't doing much to rebel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did like that style of dress. <laughs> yeah, and I guess for me. Uh... I was kind of all over the place. Like I played sports, so I was friends with some of those guys, but I was also in the band. So I was friend with band geeks and I was friends with some skaters. I was kind of all over the place. Skaters. I don't Maybe think I, yeah. and it's almost a little weird looking back that I, because I sort of jumped around between these friend groups, it's hard to say I just had like one, that super yeah. one tight circle of friends. So I, I jumped around too though. And my style changed when like my friends kind of change too mm-hmm. so there was some phases where i was way more skater wearing like dc giant skater shoes and then sure. other phases where i was wearing more high heels okay. so like it, it totally evolves too but i'm I just think like that's kind of normal too yeah. right high school is a time where you f- are trying to figure out who you are as right. a person it's a very confusing time in a lot of ways yeah, yeah. so wait, when we were in high school we we're between the ages of 13 mm-hmm. and 17 right? Just for context. I was 18 at the end Maybe high high school school. is different in some areas of the world. I don't know if it actually extends another year. So for us, it's like the last four years of school before you go on to post-secondary education. So grade nine to 12, that's ages 13 to 17 or 18. 18, Like I was 18 before I graduated, which means I could legally drink in Quebec while school was still going on, which was kind of a big deal. I was 17 and could not. All right, next question. Uh, were you ever bullied in high school or did either of you ever even participate in bullying as a result of peer pressure? Bullying back then was, of course, limited to 
um, like playground, real life. playground bully. Like r- real life, there wasn't mm-hmm. really online social media. We had MSN Messenger, but that was just like between a few friends. Maybe there was a group chat, but yeah. like yeah. I, that's not my memory of anyone bullying each other. It was real life things. So I mentioned on this podcast before that I was in a situation where um, another girl was being encouraged to fight me Mm -hmm. and she slapped me in the face and I did nothing. I won't retell the story, but, but basically all the people around her thinking back were participating in bullying by proxy, by just kind of by encouraging her to do that. And I would today call that bullying. I don't think at the time we really thought of things that way, especially when you're in the moment and everything, you know, is at a height. Um, I don't recall ever bullying others, uh, but I also wasn't someone who was constantly or persistently bullied. Like that's just one moment that really sticks out to me, but I also wasn't the victim of ongoing bullying either. Okay. And yeah, I, I wasn't bullied in high school. I, uh, I was often friends with like people in the grades above me for some reason, Hmm. which I think sort of helped avoid that. Cause like sometimes when you go to high school, it's like the older kids will sort of pick on the f- fresh new class of younger mm. people, which is kind of sucks. And hopefully that's not really the case anymore. It used to be like almost like a bit of like a hazing type An- ritual, right? Initiation. Yeah. yeah. Which is just so stupid. Like it's 16 year olds, like being mean to 13 year olds who are nervous about being somewhere for the first time. Like it's, it's super lame. It's immaturity. And I guess like yeah. that's the easiest way to rationalize it. Not that it is right and anyone should do it. But when I explain these things later on to myself, like why they occurred to me, a lot of it just comes down to immaturity. And you hope that most of these kids grow out of that and become yeah. better adults. And you think most people do. And then just some people just stay shitty their whole some life. Some people don't, but <laughs> most people do. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. How is the Canadian education system versus the American education system? Do you guys learn about taxes? Because most (laughs) of us don't. So I don't think we can really comment on the differences between the Canadian and American. But there were a lot of questions uh, with this theme of like, did you guys learn this practical thing in high school? Because I don't. And yeah, we, we can't say the differences between different regions and countries and curriculums and stuff like that. But I think we should comment comment on this idea of like why don't we learn more practical things in mm-hmm. high school, right? For the record, I never learned about taxes in high school. Neither did yeah. I. Uh, there's a lot of practical things I didn't learn in high school. And so part of me really understands the criticism, like why am I not learning about like what it means to pay a mortgage or yeah. buy a car or pay my taxes? Uh, At the same time, like part of me thinks, do you want like an underpaid, overly stressed teacher having to take on all of those life lessons? Or in a perfect world, would you hope that someone's parent or guardian is actually kind of but not all responsible for teaching their kids? I see that argument, but I think the counter argument is while there unfortunately are a lot of parents who are not taking on that responsibility and are Mm. not willing to teach their kids or they may not be knowledgeable in those things either so then you it's at it comes at the cost of those kids who wouldn't be learning those things Mm -hmm. so where can those kids get that knowledge it's school but no but here's the beautiful thing right the internet is a thing now if you feel like there are practical things in life you're not learning but how do you know that there must be resources online at this point of like, I'm sure someone has put together a list of like a YouTube video on taxes, very (laughs) useful things for like, Hey, are you towards the end of high school? But you figured out you don't feel like you've learned some very practical stuff about like having a budget or, you know, know, knowing like what you have to do with like self-employment income. Like the internet is a beautiful thing for those resources and maybe someone down below in the comments on youtube could even like make some suggestions point us to yeah. suggestions if there are some like really core useful uh, that's resources a, that's an that. incredibly good point that like i totally take for granted now because growing up there of course we didn't learn about taxes or mortgages and like eventually it's like something i asked my dad i'm like how does this work i'm trying to buy a house i have no idea <laughs> yeah, right yeah. um but Later on in life, we could just Google these things. But Mm -hmm. when we were growing up, we didn't have the option. We'd like ask a teacher or a parent and that was the answer you got. 
Well, no, the the internet Sorry, existed the internet when existed, we were in high school. But it, it wasn't that... <laughs> so, okay, I make it sound so old. There yeah. was internet, guys. Yeah. But it doesn't... The amount of knowledge and the accessibility and the like the ease of reading it, it mm -hmm. doesn't... It, it didn't exist then as it does today. I think just how computer and internet literate people are, our children young people are today compared to us yeah. is hugely different and that's why your average 16 year old today is so much more knowledgeable than i think we were when we were in high school Smarter. just because you have yeah. this resource they have the the tools yeah these yeah. online tools yeah. available to them although i've seen some very interesting articles about whether the internet necessarily teaches people knowledge they retain versus is a tool that they are just constantly able to draw from do you know what i mean there's a distinction there right like if you have to look something up on the internet and you immediately get an answer, it's kind of like when autocorrect corrects your spelling. Did you just learn how to spell oh. the word properly or did it just give you the answer and you just know that you can use it? And like a calculator, are you getting better at math in your head? No, you're just able to use the calculator as a tool. In some ways, the internet is also just a tool and you're not necessarily learning or retaining you're that. You're just relying on you're the tool just relying to get you the, the answers tool. for you. I mean, mm -hmm. we do that with like Microsoft Excel. I mean, I do that with the internet. Now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just an interesting, interesting. distinction and point. Hmm. All right. Uh, but actually, you know, one last point on this idea of like, I don't learn practical things in school. Yeah. Like I can think of a lot of things we learned in high school that I'm not using in my daily Sine, life. Sine, tan. Yeah. Like certain <laughs> things of like trigonometry. trigonometry and stuff like that. But, but I still remember it. Why? <laughs> and you really don't need to. But I, I think... I think it should be said, and this is often missed by like YouTubers who talk about like, why did I learn such useless things in high school? Mm -hmm. uh, just going through the process of learning complicated concepts, even if you're not going to use them in your daily life, is a lot of the point. And you know, if you are going into a field or a university program that requires you to have some background knowledge of math or science, Mm -hmm. It's a good thing you did learn at least yeah, the basics you, of that. And you're going to need it, even though, like, I wanted to go into pharmacy, just like a quick side note. Yeah. And I thought pharmacy was just chemistry, basically, and uh -huh. medicine. Uh-uh. <laughs> I found out it was a lot of calculus and algebra, which I hated and didn't pay attention to in high school. So it, what didn't, I, it wasn't feasible for me to pursue that. So it... it Unfortunately, I did need to know sine, cosine, and like all these other algebraic well, equations. If you had gone into If I had gone into it, which is a, a, one reason why I switched career paths. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, you're happy with how things turned out, but I that's am, kind yeah, of strange to think like how yeah. just not liking math completely changed. Yeah, but I think Ben's point is right. There, Of course, there's things that you're learning in high school that you're never going to use again. And I think teachers know this. And maybe the curriculum isn't perfect. We're not saying the curriculum is perfect. And I don't even know what the curriculum looks like today, honestly. And mm -hmm. when I was learning the one delivered to us, it definitely wasn't perfect. I thought shit, shit was dumb too. Mm -hmm. But there is something to be said that at a young age, like a growing brain, the more things you learn and retain, it just improves your ability to learn things in the future. It's like the more languages you speak, so there's some correlation between that and just the aptitude for learning in general. Yeah. So the more you can learn, even if it's about stuff that's not going to matter, you're still building your brain capacity in a way and mm -hmm. learning how to become a, a thinker. And hey, that's great if you're a critical thinker and thinking about how certain concepts don't apply in real life. Mm -hmm. Good. You know, challenge yeah. them. I mean, don't yell at your teacher, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't challenge them too yeah. much. All right, next question. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how emo was the emo phase <laughs> emo of Simply? Phase. Uh, is this because, like, I have a couple of pictures of me looking like You've talked uh, about how you went through an You literally just talked about the cargo pants and chains, and that's yeah. emo, right? I mean, I get, yeah, the definition of emo is kind of up in the air to me, and I'm not sure <laughs> if that definition has changed. Um, I wasn't wearing... Like, like there's emo and then there's gothic, which I, yeah. I wasn't in high school, okay. at least the definition at the time. Um, I didn't wear much makeup. I think you're over it. This question is mostly a joke, it? just like one to, oh. <laughs> you know. Okay. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, I was a sock. <laughs> okay. Okay. I that's was a an good emo one. sock, but in cargo pants <laughs> with chains. <laughs> uh, all right. From uh, Amber's Pask, which teachers did you have crushes on? <laughs> Amber. <laughs> I like this question. Wait, why? 
Well, it's just funny. Expression. I think a lot of people can relate to like there was that teacher in high school, like Ms. McKinnon, grade uh, grade eleven chemistry teacher. All the boys had a crush on her. If she's did, watching did this, hi. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Ben. <laughs> I know that's, that's that's weird, but like, come on, it's it happens. Yeah, I remember Mr. Green was our science teacher in grade ten, and yeah. all the girls loved him. I thought it was ridiculous the way they would like talk. About, I was like, you guys are so dumb. He's so old. Yeah. He was and like even, 35. Even if he was interested in them, that would just be super weird and creepy and inappropriate. Yeah. Nothing <laughs> weird ever happened. But I do remember the girls talking about like, oh, I have class with Mr. Green. Didn't you know? So there are always like some teachers though, or like uh, learning teacher. What, what did they call it? When like someone was doing like a placement. Sometimes you would see teachers that were maybe a little too friendly with students and that always struck me as strange I mean, not that i'm accusing they're trying to do anyone. their job well they just started their new job so of <laughs> course guess. they want to be liked and respected that's probably really hard actually for new teachers to teach yeah. high school students because then they have all these kids that are not that far in age from them and they need to come off like an intelligent res respected teacher and that's a huge challenge so hats off honestly actually, to teachers yeah, no. who teach high school kids yeah you're totally right i have a lot of respect and admiration for people who choose to be high school that's teachers. not an easy job they should be paid more they absolutely Pay the high school teachers well all teachers but high school teachers more too yeah really uh what is your most embarrassing high school moment Ooh, what do you think was it getting you already talked about getting, getting slapped, slapped in front of people but like i'm trying to think do i have a funnier kind of embarrassing do you have moment? a less yeah depressing one <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I could give what you one. You? you can think about it while I tell mine. I uh, I remember in the last year at high school, I can only laugh about this now because like I didn't get seriously hurt. But, uh, uh, you know, in the last year of high school, everyone has their licenses. People drive to school, park in the school parking lot. And I remember a friend of mine was leaving the parking lot and like to just sort of show off and be a little jokester. I like jumped on the hood of her car. As she was leaving the parking lot. Man. It was funny. And like, it's in front of all these people. It's at the end of the school day. And she's not going that fast, but I guess she, she braked pretty quickly without me like anticipating it. And I just went flying off the front of the car in front of like all these people. And I really, <laughs> I really hurt my wrist actually. And that night we had a, I had like a jazz drumming performance. We had like some recital at the high school. And I just remember like my wrist was like shaking. Like I could barely hold on to a drumstick. And like the whole school knew this. And they were like watching me like play through the pain. It was a super surreal uh, moment. But that was, I guess, embarrassing. But yeah, I think so I did all right. what lesson did you learn? <laughs> uh, don't jump on moving don't cars. On moving yeah, cars. don't. Yeah, don't think this is like a cool thing to do. I'm embarrassed by it now, but... Uh, have you seen that movie Whiplash? No. You haven't, eh? When I watched that movie, it, like, it really vividly brought back those memories of uh, high school for me. Not that I had a music teacher who was insane and throwing things at my head. But uh, otherwise, that's a really good movie. You should watch Whiplash. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you have anything to add there, Christine? Or, no. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you could give advice to your high school self, what would it be? It's going to be over one day. <laughs> it's all going to be over. Don't worry. You know what you're putting? That's a pretty sad spin on it. But I actually have something similar to say. I think it's when you're in high school, everything kind of feels like it's the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense because like those four years of your life, when you're when you've only been alive <laughs> for like 13, 14, 15 years, it's like it's a huge part of your life. And I'm yeah. not saying it's not important, but it's really important important to keep perspective on the fact that one day the things that happened to you in high school and who you are in high school does not have to define mm -hmm. who you are. I think the other point just adding to that is generally where you go to high school isn't your choice. Like you're kind of just put in a high school. It's where you live and this is where your parents tell you to go. And, and these are just the people in your friend circle. You mm -hmm. don't really have much freedom. And so that definitely impacts like your your experience like maybe you just luck out and you have a great time there's great people but maybe you don't and you don't really have the choice to move anywhere and you you will get those choices one day mm -hmm. and maybe that's something to remember that like yes so, you are you are stuck and it might be awful but you will find that freedom yeah to and make your own life path and if high school wasn't a terrible or isn't a terrible experience for you 
enjoy it while you can because you never are going to be able to sort of recapture that yeah. like it's it's a one in a lifetime kind of thing hopefully you come out of high school with nice memories and friends that were sort of always feel a little bit like family or people helped shape you into who you are yeah. uh any advice on part-time jobs or seasonal work during high school yeah milk boy yeah, so we <laughs> talked about this on our jobs podcast. I worked at a grocery store during high school and Christine worked at Shoppers Drug Mart. Which As is a like, cashier and then a cosmetician. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we both did work during high school. My advice would be it's a really... I appreciate that I had that experience. I think it helped me as a person and it was nice to have money in high school too. Uh, neither of us worked because we had to to support our families. So I just want to add that caveat that we weren't mm -hmm. really doing it out of necessity. I was encouraged to work, though. My mm -hmm. family encouraged me to work. They wanted me to understand what it was like to make my own money and to start my own savings. So Yeah, and it's a good way of learning the value of money when you start making it yourself at that age. And uh, then you learn how to budget on your own. <laughs> I would say if you don't have to work, though, you want to make sure it's not to the detriment of you doing well in school and I actually yeah. stopped working towards the end of uh, I can't remember the time period exactly but like I didn't want my grades to suffer and it to affect my ability to get an entry scholarship because I was making for 12 sure. bucks an hour putting milk on a shelf right Cause yeah and that's a hard balance to find I think for kids because we always hear this pressure like you got to keep your grades up if you want to go to university or college. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to know exactly where that tipping point is. Like, okay, well, if I work 12 hours a week, will I be able to keep my grades up just enough so that I can get in? So it's kind of one of those things you have to, you have to be honest with yourself with how you're doing and how you're feeling about things and make the decisions that are right for you. Mm -hmm. I would strongly encourage people to like to get a job or maybe if you don't need the money, at least like a volunteering type opportunity in the summer just to give yourself some experiences. Like I volunteered that. in high school. It was actually part of our curriculum requirements. That's right. For, in yeah. Ontario, you had you to had volunteer. You had to do 40 hours. No, was it 40? Than 40 hours a week for... No. Wait, no, that, that makes no week. sense. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. Sorry. I think it was a total of 40 hours for Over the Over the course of like all of high school. It was a very low threshold, You Christine. can't work when you're, you're like thir 13. This was in the last year of high school or something. No, no. Was it you, to, to graduate from high school, you needed documentation that you did like 20 yeah. hours of community service or volunteering okay. at all. Yeah. It was I, a low threshold. I, I don't remember the amount, but I remember doing it because I volunteered at the one of the retirement homes that my grandfather was in. Oh, okay. Is where I volunteered, yeah. I can't remember where I volunteered. I think I left it to like the last week of high school. You don't remember what you did? <laughs> I think I I did something. I think I had done something, and I just had to find that person to sign off on it. <laughs> it was like yeah. right before the end. Uh, next question, how did you treat your parents when you were teenagers? <laughs> Why isn't the question, how did your parents treat you? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that's the question we'll answer. <laughs> my my parents were a little overbearing, I would say, because I had I had two older siblings, and usually that means they sort of kick down doors for you and they care a little less by yeah. the time the younger child is doing things but I kind of blame my older brother and sister for being so well behaved and never screwing up and never getting into trouble that by the time I got to high school even though I was a good kid and doing well in school the fact that I was the one who was like staying out late and going to some high school parties and, you know, drinking a little bit in high school. Like that seemed mm -hmm. like a huge deal to them because my older brother and sister didn't do any of that. Yeah. So I was the older kid. So mm -hmm. my parents were far more overbearing with me, in my yeah. opinion, than my sister, for sure. She was allowed out <laughs> way more without <laughs> like questioning. They caring for They Jen. stopped caring. <laughs> but at the same time, my sister and I, we were very good kids compared mm -hmm. to other people I went to high school with. So I always felt like I was wrongly judged and punished or grounded for things that really didn't need to be done. Sure. Like, it's like sometimes I just think some parents, especially when it's their first kid, they want to teach a lesson to their kid just to like, you're in mm -hmm. high school, you did something kind of wrong, but like, it's honestly not that bad, but we're going <laughs> to punish you anyways. And here's your consequence. Uh, I don't handle uh, punishments and consequences very well <laughs> when they don't make sense and when you're not going to learn anything from it. 
uh, I was a smart ass. And I'll just tell this story. because You probably would have been so hard to parent. Probably. But I was a good kid. So so that was my argument. I always okay. got good grades. I didn't do hard drugs. Like, I wasn't doing anything <laughs> okay. wrong in, in my defense. Sure. Um, so I remember this. So I went to my, I think I was like, I must have been 16 because I had a car. I had a license and yeah. I could drive on my own. So I was 16. I, I was at a boyfriend's house at the time. I swear to God, fell asleep watching a movie. It was the weekend. I mm-hmm. fell asleep. I failed to answer my phone. Yeah. I wake up at two, two or something in the morning and realize oh. like, fuck, because like, mm-hmm. I was supposed to call at least or like go yeah. home. I'm clearly not drinking because I'm driving. I hadn't drank. Like nothing's going well, you're on. You're 16. I'm too. 16. And I'm 16. <laughs> I drive right home and my mom is there really upset with me. Oh, yeah. I, because I fell asleep and failed to call her. That was obviously wrong well, on my behalf. Because her, she didn't know where her daughter know, was until but two I, in the But morning. I explained, uh-huh. and clearly everything was fine. Like I mean, I wasn't doing anything wrong, and okay. I wasn't out partying and drinking, which is which was the fear. I yeah. think I think she thought like I just went out and partied, okay. which I was not doing. So I came home, like obviously apologized begrudgingly, and then later I find out that my my punishment is her taking my car keys away but i used that car to drive myself my sister and our family's friends kids to school every day because we lived 45 minutes from our school because it was the only french immersion in the region and our parents didn't really drive to school and there was no public transit that made sense your punishment is you can't go to school my (laughs) punishment was like we're not giving you any reasonable way to go to school neither your sister or their friends so I just made the executive decision that like this makes this punishment actually makes no sense. So on Monday I took the spare keys and drove everyone to school because uh, was and then I said later I'm like think of a better punishment <laughs> like this makes no sense. So I obviously was wrong and irresponsible by falling asleep and failing to call. But at the time I'm just like this is so dumb. I literally like I do, I'm not doing the bad things that parents are just thinking of like she sure. she was projecting what i guess her friends kids were doing bad because other kids were doing bad things mm. i was i wasn't and i felt like it, like i was just like i have to parent my parents <laughs> so i was right. a smart ass but i just think of that story as funny because the one time i got grounded and punished it like it made no sense <laughs> <laughs> well they didn't have experience punishing you since you were so they were such learning. a goody two shoes right i wasn't a goody two shoes i just i wanted some freedom to live my life too and like be able to go to my boyfriend and you know what that is a hard balance for parents in a lot of ways a lot of ways children are kind of teaching their parents as they go as well yeah so yeah i think it's hard to know you know it's not easy parenting children and knowing that balance between being responsible and there and a disciplinary voice but also especially for a teenager just like knowing those boundaries you have to give them like i don't want to say who but like i know of someone who doesn't let their teenage kid like have their cell phone without supervision and to me that is just like bordering on i don't want to be hyperbolic but like i think that is a really terrible thing to do to your kids to not give them that sort of freedom it's the opposite of harm reduction by holding back all these things that all their friends have what do you think they're gonna do they're just gonna go on their friend's phone and then they're gonna rebel and do something maybe worse yeah but it's a tough balance and we're like we're not we're not parents, we're not parents so i don't know so i'm only speaking from the perspective of having been parented <laughs> <laughs> all right next but question maybe just to just to close that mm-hmm. off it's hard i know your parents maybe maybe they're tough on you maybe you hate them but they're trying to do their best presumably and they want to and they hopefully want the best for you so sometimes you just gotta you know suck it up a little and like try and see where they're coming from (laughs) all right oh (laughs) on the same theme what is the worst thing you did in high school that your parents likely don't know about don't know Uh uh-oh oh i have one okay you first what if my parents watch this podcast? Do they watch it? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Um, uh-oh. Okay. So I did something. I don't care. I don't care about telling the story because I think it teaches a lesson. A lesson. However, obviously I'm not encouraging doing this. Uh, I was incredibly stupid when I was uh, 15. I mean, like, we all look back thinking that we made stupid decisions. We did some stupid things, yeah. Of course you did. But... 
for some dumb reason that makes no sense, I thought it would be fun to get addicted to cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know why. And I thought okay, about this. so you this. did go through a rebellious phase. Yes, except I wasn't doing it to piss off my parents because I never told them. And I didn't even do it with friends. Smoking was like a social activity at the time, like uh -huh. just smoking cigarettes. And I would, wouldn't even do it with friends. I literally bought a pack off my friend and then took it by myself, by myself to the park and was doing an experiment to see how many cigarettes do I need to smoke to feel like I'm addicted. There was like some weird scientist in me, <laughs> Christine the Science Queen, just wanted to know how many to get addicted because I was always told that like, oh, don't take one cigarette, you're going to get addicted. So I was trying to prove maybe that I wouldn't because yeah, intelligence. So I did it and I got so sick of smoking by myself four in a row that I literally like I wanted to throw up and, well, yeah, it's, I, gross, I, and I, it's yeah. gross and I never smoked again. So Good. Good. Yeah, wow. You Okay, so you were kind of a rebellious in like a, I'm going to prove people wrong and do bad things kind yeah, of. Yeah, except I didn't tell anyone this. I did it in secret, which also doesn't That's, make sense. Honestly, it's really sad. I, I get sad when I hear about <laughs> sorry, your high school stuff. It's simply not logical. Like, what was I doing? Yeah, just PSA, smoking is gross and yes, terrible it, for you. It I is disgusting. I don't think we need to really say that. But it, it was point, so disgusting but... that I couldn't even... And I was trying to like it and I didn't because it was that disgusting. Okay. I mean, you shared something bad you did, so maybe I will too. And yes. uh, again, I'm not Tell saying us, this in... Let's get you in trouble. If I laugh at this now, it's just because it's many years later and I, you know, I do feel bad about it. But uh, when it was towards the end of high school, my parents kind of know about this because we got caught. But uh, our school did like i think they called it a car rally it was basically a scavenger hunt and it's just like you know it's almost the end of the year let's do something crazy graduating class kind of prank kind of thing so there were like things like you had to check off this list and do and some of them were like get a picture of you with a cop or get a picture of you swimming in the canal which is like a really gross like man-made river in the middle of ottawa that like you wouldn't want to be in so there were some like more innocuous things on the list and I stuck to those in the group of friends who I did it with. But there were a few things on that list that were uh, illegal. Bad. <laughs> like, uh, like one of them was our high school was right beside City Hall. And it was around the time of Tulip Festival, I guess, which is a thing in Ottawa. And there were just a bunch of like like artists had like drawn tulips or like there were like these ceramic tulip sculptures and i think i think people just thought it was like some nothing like art installation and didn't think too much about it but one of the things on the list was take one of those tulips and a few people did and the next day or like two days later we opened the newspaper and there's an article saying like mastermind thieves steal tulips that were like to be auctioned off for charity <laughs> and all of us were like f like fuck <laughs> yeah so i i did not take a tulip wait your parents don't know about this so they know they don't really know what happened but they know i got in trouble and like we literally me and a, everyone involved in it ended up having to do like volunteering at uh like I had to volunteer at, uh, or like, I guess it's almost community service. Not that it was handled by like police or anything like that, but like I had to help out at a tulip festival to like make <laughs> reparations for it. But I just remember opening the paper and being like described like our group. It's, <laughs> it's the like Ottawa criminal way. masterminds or something. It's the Ottawa way of dealing with justice. You had to help out at the next tulip festival for your actions. Yeah. So uh, just to be clear, I'm not admitting to doing anything illegal and I, I didn't, but, uh, yeah, that was a pretty terrible thing. Yeah. <laughs> Kids do stupid things. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to do dumb stuff in yeah. high school. Hopefully not that dumb. Yeah. Like the stories we just shared, I try not to beat myself up, you know, for the things I did when I was young because I think in hindsight, I absolutely learned good lessons from it and I can kind of rationalize my behavior by my lack of maturity at the time. And I imagine you can do the same. Yeah, and we're not telling these stories to, like, glorify them or make light no. of them, you know? They're... They're human experiences that I think a lot of people have as young people. 
Yeah. And hopefully you learn from them. Yeah. And become better humans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. Uh, what were your best subjects in school? Mm, I loved chemistry and biology. <laughs> okay. Science. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really like... I. I did well in school and I was the kind of person who could do well without trying too hard. So is the question like what subjects we enjoyed or just like, where did we get, uh, where did we get good what grades? What were your, your best? So I think that means what did you do well in? Uh, <laughs> Siler. I, I don't, I don't remember. I was kind of pretty good at everything. I enjoyed music, music class, yeah, music. but you know, that's not really a, I still remember the first 20 elements of the periodic table. Well, like the acronym for them. Oh, yeah? Prove it's, it. It's like Hehileb Knaf Namgal Sips Clarka. And if you spell those out, it's the beginning of each of the elements <laughs> for the first 20. Anyways, it's funny knowledge that I have, that. but I don't need. <laughs> All right, next one. Do you think high school shaped you as a person? I don't know. I get a lot of high school shapes you as a person talks from my family, and I'm curious if that's true for you one thing okay so I f did absolutely find it frustrating when I was a young person and my family and just like older people would be like oh high school shapes you as a person and just like what voice is that I don't know old person voice <laughs> <laughs> like I just it, it gets annoying I think when you're a young person to hear older people tell you these things like oh your life is going to change forever you're being shaped so much by your peers and you just kind of roll your eyes and because you're just living your life and you don't want to be told these things that like don't mean much to you. So yeah. I do find it frustrating to hear that comment from older family members. So I wonder if that's where she's coming from. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it shapes you in the way that like these are your formative years of you growing up from adolescence into a young adult. So yeah, those are those are years where you're sort of figuring out who you are. And mm -hmm. yeah, the, the people in your life and the things you do are gonna shape who you are it's kind of hard to say though like specific ways in which that is the case right like there's a lot of things about our childhood that shapes us into the adults we are can we really point to specific things without a lot of expensive therapy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess socialization no matter where you are whether it's at high school or your parents at home or the siblings you deal with all of these things are going to shape your life outlook mm -hmm. your personality how you view the world in a lot of ways that you'll never really consciously be aware of yeah yeah uh did you wear hollow to your prom <laughs> <laughs> i at the time hadn't really discovered hollow oh what yeah, a ch that's why know. you didn't enjoy high school yeah it was awful it was a hollowless <laughs> school i I'll, I'll show some pictures of my prom how's that i <laughs> do not recognize myself when i look at my prom pictures I don't oh. recognize, like, that person. I don't even really remember going to prom. Really? Yeah. I was kind of just, I think I mentally blocked it all out of my head. So it's very strange for me to look at my pictures. I I have this, I had a, a big red dress that was, like, from BCBG, which okay. is some whatever floofy company now. Uh -huh. um, it was, like, red chiffon, like, tube dress that all the girls would wear. Sure. My hair was bleach blonde. And I was wearing like hot red lipstick and I did my own <laughs> hair and makeup while mm -hmm. all the other girls went to a place to get it done. And you could tell that I did my own hair and makeup. Like it just, it wasn't the style at the time. I didn't have like some fancy updo. So yeah, I wore red. I wore a clunky watch. Like it just, it wasn't a good look and, <laughs> and I had an awful time. <laughs> I like, I don't remember that much about my prom because i feel like it gets built up in pop culture as like this hugely important like best night of our lives like let's get mm. laid kind of like so narrative. It's, it's hard to live up to that expectation when you see that in movies but i just don't think that's actually how prom is for most people it's like hopefully it's a bit of a celebration you get to like you know have a good time with people that you might not see anytime soon if you don't continue to be friends after high Except school but this year there's no proms yeah. There's virtual that's, proms. That is sad. Yeah. A Zoom prom isn't Zoom quite prom. the same yeah. thing, is it? But I don't know. Get Prom gets built up to this fake thing, right? I guess maybe it is for some people and they really look forward to it and have that dress picked out that they want to wear for years. But... Oh, yeah. I think for a lot of young women, it is a huge deal. Like there was always conversations about have you picked it? It was almost as important as like a wedding dress as people treated it. The really? way I grew up, people were spending $1,000 on their prom dress. 
that's not the culture yeah. I was in. It was for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. Had you and Ben met in high school, would you have gotten Ooh, along? I don't know, Ben. Would you fancy me? <laughs> well, I was pretty much friends with everyone and Christine had no friends. So that might have actually worked. But I wouldn't have been your friend if I was friends with no one. <laughs> would you have been I, nice to me? I don't me? know. Yeah, I think so. Although, I don't know. maybe you're too cool. Maybe I wouldn't have noticed you if you were just, you know, hiding in the bathroom stall eating lunch alone, you know? How do you know I did that? <laughs> I, I think you've said I, that before. I told you that, yes. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you can't I, come I don't in know. the women's bathroom anyways. What's wrong with know. you? It's weird thinking about, as an adult, to think about your significant other as a child or a teenager what is a strange thing. What do you think when you see the pictures of me from high school? It makes me kind of sad just knowing that you were so unhappy at that time. Man. <laughs> but I'm I'm glad. Like, I'm glad that this is how my life worked out because I am i don't want to know you when I was younger, when I was a different person. We yeah. met at the perfect point. We met at the I right think. time. Yeah. Yeah, even if we had met in high, uh, university mm-hmm. or early on in, like, undergrad or something, I, I think we had very different lifestyles then too and it probably wouldn't have worked out. Yeah, so here we are. <laughs> you got lucky. I got lucky. Oh, man. Uh, next question. Did you experience or see any racism, homophobia, or general discrimination mm. where you went to high school? So to situate this, yeah, we graduated high school in 2006, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And my guess is that the sort of social climate of high school then is very different than it is now. So, like, I think the answer is yes and I'll, I'll give an example of what i mean because i don't think i saw like a lot of overt people being discriminated against because of their sexual orientation or race but it was very common for boys in my high school to like call each other pussies or use gay slurs against each other to be mm-hmm. like you're less of a man and to think back like i had two very close male friends in high school who came out of the closet after high school and it, it really bums me out to think that that sort of culture of guys using that language maybe made them feel like they couldn't come out in high school. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people come out when they feel it is right for them. Maybe it wouldn't have happened anyway, but I really hate to think that that sort of culture in that high school made them feel like they couldn't just be who they were. Yeah, um, I would agree. I remember in high school people using the word gay as a negative thing. Yeah. And they would kind of use it synonymously with stupid, like that's so gay or lame. Yeah, to lame, be clear, maybe. like people weren't actually saying those words against gay LGBTQ no, people. No, but it inherently But is, it is inherently right? homophobic to use that right. language in that pejorative sense. Yeah. Yes, but kids at that time, this was the language that people used. And it is kind of sad that... Yeah. You know, I'm glad things have changed and we now recognize that. And we hope no one they've uses, changed. Well, I, we hope they, they have changed. They I think changed. they have. Yeah. Um, but it's, it is sad thinking back that, that that was a culture that absolutely affected LGBTQ plus people, mm-hmm. right? Negatively. How could it not? So, yeah, that makes me sad to think back that that was a reality um, in high school for yeah. sure. And yeah, I, I think we have reason to think and we really do hope that that's not the case yeah. anymore. Uh, in your opinion, what's the youngest people should be getting into serious relationships? All right. Well, as your parents, uh, there were a lot of <laughs> high school relationship questions, so I felt like I had to include one. But it's it's something I'm like feel kind of weird about commenting on the romantic lives of teenagers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. I I didn't really date much in high school. At when all. was your first girlfriend? Uh. like the first real girlfriend I had was in undergrad like after high school like I had a a girl I was 20 I had a bit of like a high school sweetheart in high school sort of thing and we would hang out at like parties and there's and kiss a little maybe kiss a little (laughs) but like you know what I mean we never really date I dated her after high school strangely enough but uh I don't know maybe at my high school things were a little different I felt like there weren't a bunch of people having serious relationships so much. And I don't know why that is, but... uh, Maybe it's just in retrospect, because once you had more serious relationships later on, the ones in high school didn't seem as serious. Yeah, maybe. It's a lot of like, oh, they held hands after third period. 
<laughs> like they held hands in the hall. They're dating now. Like um, I wouldn't put a number on when someone is ready to be in a relationship. Like I never want to say, oh, you have to be 16 or you sure. have to be 22. I don't think that's fair. And I think everyone moves at their own pace. Um, obviously I think it's important to consider the legality <laughs> yes. uh, first and foremost, cause that's something that just cannot be argued. Uh, but aside from that, it's about like, how, how, how do you feel? If you feel like you're ready to be in a relationship, then mm -hmm. that's what matters most. And also is the person you want to be in a relationship ready to be in a relationship with you right because you want that mutual respect as well and it's really hard to recognize when someone you really want to be with isn't ready right mm -hmm. that's something that's that's tricky too that maybe you learn as you you know go through different relationships yes i would tell people like you don't need to rush into things or mm -hmm. i hope you don't feel pressured like oh high school is almost over and i haven't been in a relationship like that's not a good reason to like yeah. choose to be in a relationship. And yeah, the legality point's a good thing. Like I, if you're a girl in high school and an older boy is paying attention to you, that might seem really flattering when you're the age you are. And in retrospect, you might realize that that was actually kind of creepy. Yeah. Right. And right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I kind of feel weird about this question in general. It, and I, I think the main point you're right is, is like, it really depends on, on you, you. Yeah. but don't feel pressure. into And doing don't something. be afraid to talk to others. So maybe you have an older sibling or maybe it's your parent or someone, an older family friend that you look up to, to ask people questions to help understand like if you're ready. Because mm -hmm. young people, I always had tons of questions and didn't really feel like I had anyone to ask. Whereas yeah. my sister, who is three years younger than me, she had me she to, to, to kind you. of ask. So not that I'm like, no one's really an expert in someone else's relationship, no. but it does absolutely help to have someone to talk to. So absolutely. look for people in your life that who, whose positions or opinions you may respect. All right. Uh, from blah, blah, rah, rah on Twitter. <laughs> I like the name. <laughs> What's your advice for staying focused on school and stopping procrastination? Uh, I always procrastinated, so I cannot answer this question. I am the opposite. I am extremely uh, methodical and I always have a plan. I think I've given this advice before, maybe at the start of quarantine when I was just like tweeting some advice, but I've used it my whole life. And maybe you have some giant project for high school that's just so overwhelming and there's like four parts you have to do for it. And there's like an essay and a presentation and like all this shit. And it's going to take you two months. Mm -hmm. Divide that up into smaller pieces and make yourself a schedule a checklist and make it manageable on a day-to-day -day basis. So maybe you have to start two months in advance once you know the, maybe it's not two months, that's a little long. I'm thinking like university. Mm -hmm. But maybe in high school you have two weeks to do a project. So on day one, you know that all you got to write is the intro. Just the first paragraph, that's it. And then it's easy because it's just one paragraph. It's not like the 16 you have to write. And then on day two, what's next on your schedule is you got to start your, your literature review. So you start doing that and then you check off those boxes. And if you can follow, well, first you have to make, make the schedule, but if you can make and follow it, I trust me, you will learn such good self-disciplinary skills. And when you're done that project and you're not staying up till 2 a.m. to finish it and scrambling and, and giving it in, like you're unsure that it's good because like I have no idea what I just did, you will have spent so much longer working on it so that your mind is fresh um, you feel better about it. You feel proud of it. And it's ultimately becomes a better work product, I think, when you take the time to segment it out. Not only is it a better product, but you were maybe more efficient at making it. You were more effective at it. And you were less stressed. And that's kind of the goal, right? Mm -hmm. You want to manage the stress that is high school, that is schoolwork. Good advice, simply. So stay focused. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> uh, all right, next one. What was your favorite teenage angst song? Oh, my God. <laughs> Being a teenager is an angsty time for a lot of people. So I really like this question. I think we can all look back to high school. And a lot of like the music you're nostalgic about as an adult is the music that you have memories of in high school and university, I think. Like Goo Goo Dolls, maybe? Like Iris? Oh, okay. That's, that's that an interesting music, answer. Yeah. I think from our era, like a lot of people, like the first emo stuff they think of or angsty is like My Chemical Romance. Yeah. 
they were really big uh the used i listened to for me personally i think death cab for cutie yeah death cab. i listened to a lot you know uh yeah uh, transatlanticism was a really good album i remember going to see them live too but then like i will follow you into the dark that's probably yeah. like the saddest song i would yeah. listen to a bunch <laughs> i listen to all the sad kind of emo songs i still yeah. do <laughs> Uh, all right, next question. How do you stay out of drama in high school? Mm, this is tricky because as I was saying before, you don't really have a choice on where you can go and migrate within high school. You're kind of like stuck. So mm -hmm. it's harder to actually stay out of drama when your friend circle is so small and you literally have to go to the same class every day. Whereas when you're older and you're in a career or workplace, maybe you can find ways to, to move around and people are less immature generally speaking mm -hmm. when you're older um i i wasn't really into drama in terms of like oh stacy's dating jared's ex or something but, like but lucy said she had a crush on him yeah. so you can't date jared <laughs> i think it's inevitable sometimes if you have a smaller friend circles to be pulled into this even if you're not the primary cause of drama and it is really hard to navigate to, you know, because you want, you don't want people to be upset with you. You don't want people to think you're not on their side. You don't want to look like you're not supporting people. So it is definitely tricky. And I don't necessarily have the best advice to like stay out of drama because I almost think in some cases it's not possible or realistic. It's not, it's maybe not entirely possible. And being in drama, quote unquote, is partly just about like learning how to be social because in the rest of your life too you're gonna come across shitty people that talk behind mm -hmm. people's back good point point. and you're gonna have to kind of learn to navigate your way and hopefully just avoid people like that for the most yeah. part that's how you kind of learn negotiation skills for lack of a better word to make it sound so robotic like how to negotiate with others <laughs> but just how to balance things so that you know you don't want to make things worse for you or others mm -hmm. but it's also generally a social situation under which you have to survive like this is just where you are so I you think have to live with it some people are just going to get unfairly pulled into this the same way you're going to get unfairly bullied for no reason yeah. but i would like to think that if you kind of if you are a pretty genuine good person who's not talking behind people's backs and stuff like that that should help you not get sucked in to the sort of mm -hmm. petty bullshit politics of high school and if there is petty bullshit that uh, pursues after that despite you being a good person remind yourself that these are immature individuals uh -huh. um and that's the i think the best way to rationalize something that just you know awful behavior <laughs> because it, it happens uh what's your favorite high school memory let's i know i know you have this negative <laughs> high school you experience know my answer? but give us something positive simply graduating <laughs> Okay, I'll take it, even if you don't remember your prom. Uh, for me, it's not being in class. It's uh, one of my best friends in high school who I still talk to sometimes was like our class co-president. And we would just like go hang out in his basement, you know, after school days, playing like Nintendo 64 and just shooting the shit and staying up late and eating pizza. And I look back like fondly on those memories or like going to a senior jazz band practiced on a Tuesday night. And even though I've lost touch with most of those people, and it's mostly my fault for not staying in touch with them, I do kind of fondly look back on, on those memories still. So That's good. And it's important to know that, that like most people are going to have great experiences in high school that they can look back on. It's a mixed bag for times. most people, I think. Uh, are those parties where everybody drinks alcohol and gets high actually a thing? And did you go to them? <laughs> I never really got drunk or high until university. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you weren't really going to high school parties so much. I mean, eh? there was a couple and there was some drinking and like, you know, drinking a little bit out of a Mickey, but it it wasn't that much wasn't. compared to university. <laughs> I've, I'm not proud of this, but I'll, I'll say I, I think I went to more parties and drank more in like the last year of high school and the summer after high school mm. than any period after that and that is not a good thing i because yeah you're it's not good it's for illegal you. 
Well, I was 18, <laughs> so I could age. legally drink in oh, Quebec, okay. actually. So that's different than the States where the drinking age is 21. Well, you're right? absolutely not legally I could legally to, yeah. drink in the last year of high school, which is probably sounds kind of strange for a lot of people listening to this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it wasn't healthy. And for any parents out there maybe listening to this, I wonder, like, I, I had parents who, like, wouldn't have dreamed of letting me drink alcohol if I wasn't an adult. And... uh When you saw people like that who treated their kids that way, sometimes as soon as they could legally drink, they sort of go off the rails and drink too much and get sick and put themselves in unsafe positions. So I would encourage, I mean, we're not parents again. We're not really qualified to give parental advice, but I think it would have made a big difference if my parents were just like, hey, like you're 17, you want to have a a beer with dinner just to see what that's like. And you can taste your first beer with us just like watching you and knowing what it feels like to be a little buzzed sort of thing. I think that approach makes a lot of sense in some ways. Because I remember like my biggest memory of prom actually going back to the prom question was there were a lot of people there who were clearly having drinks for the first time. And I don't think that's what you want your last high school memory of prom to be, of you not knowing what it's like to be drunk and getting drunk and embarrassing yourself. So this is interesting because my parents did the opposite of yours. So we're kind of an experiment, although sample size is N equals two. So <laughs> okay. my parents were a bit more liberal with alcohol and I'd have like a vodka cranberry or a Ryan Coke, like, or my dad would Your dad give was me giving a you Ryan Cokes? <laughs> yeah, just, just a little. <laughs> like it wasn't really made to be a huge deal. Yeah. I mean, okay, I wasn't like that young. I wasn't a baby. But when I was <laughs> yeah, 16 yeah. and, you know, he knew that my friends are, would, yeah. would come over with a case of beer, they'd give him a beer and then we'd go to the basement and drink the rest of them. <laughs> okay. And he'd be like, whatever. So your dad was so, pretty chill about it. Yeah, they weren't <laughs> mad at me if I was consuming an alcoholic beverage. They just mm-hmm. wanted to make sure, like, I, being smart and safe, I was being right? smart. I obviously didn't get into a car with someone who had been drinking. That was huge. Yeah. And that I wasn't drinking more than I should and I think how else do you learn that other than like drinking a little bit in moderation how the hell do you know you know what's too much Mm -hmm. and as a young person like you just said it's so easy to just be like I just want to drink it all this is my first time trying this my parents aren't Mm -hmm. home let's just drink the whole bottle to see if it works and that's not usually good either yeah I remember the first time I had a beer was like in my buddy's basement and we're all like having a sip of this, like, well, I don't think it was even in the fridge. It was like a warm beer. And we were all trying <laughs> yeah. to like pretend we didn't think it was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. And last question. At which point of time in your high school years did you figure out what you wanted to pursue in college or even beyond that? And were you given the freedom to choose whatever career path you wanted at that age? I still feel like we're, we were just so young in high school and... It's crazy to think that when you're 16, at least in my experience, I was 16 when I was applying for early admissions to university, Mm -hmm. which is crazy to be like, you're 16, pick which program you want to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, Before I ended up applying to university, I initially wanted to go to college, which is different here in Canada. We have college and university. University is for more um, academic studies and college is often for like applied studies yeah. or like skills or trades. Yeah, a lot of the trades so stuff. i wanted to go to college for graphic design which mm-hmm. is a more applied field i don't think people know that i don't yeah, yeah. but i mean it makes sense kind of because i'm a little creative you know mm-hmm. um, colorful um that's what i wanted to do i really loved playing with computers and i started video editing for like class projects in grade 10 and it made me so excited and I, that's what I wanted to do. I told my parents and at the time like college made the most sense to go into graphic design, mm-hmm. but they strongly discouraged me from it. And I, it wasn't because they didn't want me to be happy. I don't want to leave that impression. Mm-hmm. Um, they did. They wanted me to do what I wanted, but they were trying to remind me and I see it like now and I appreciate it and I'm happy with the path I did take. But they were trying to tell me like, Christine, clearly you have an aptitude for maybe it's science, maybe it's the social sciences. Um, they, they could see it in my grades and my essays. And neither of them went to university. And I think that probably explains their position is they yeah. want, I would have been the first person in our immediate family to go to university. And that's a big deal. For it parents, is a big deal right? for, for parents. So they want, they encouraged me to go to university because they believed that I could do it and would, uh, 
succeed and prevail and and grow as a person and build my knowledge Mm -hmm. and I initially was like no I want to go to college because like they didn't want me to do that so obviously I wanted to do what they didn't want me to do Mm -hmm. Um, but eventually I said okay and I applied to criminology and that's where I ended up and where I still am Uh, but it wasn't what I initially wanted to do and I guess I kind of skipped over the pharmacy part because the pharmacy part I mentioned earlier I'd learned a little bit earlier that I was going to need too much math so then I switched paths and that all of a sudden I wanted graphic design because like there was no math in that (laughs) it is pretty crazy this societal expectation that like at 16 you're applying for programs that will dictate the course of your life yeah. it's a huge amount of pressure but just know that you know what you decide to do in the first year of university does not have to be the thing you were locked into for eternity oh yeah you can change and like I, I still don't know like when did you figure so. out what you wanted to pursue in college i still don't know if i figured out what i should have or would have wanted to do in college you know and i've been out of university for like 10 years i think yeah and we're not the best example honestly because we just happen to be lucky and ended up pretty much in the career that we picked when we were 17, Mm -hmm. roughly. I think it's much more common, yeah, yeah. for people to go through and experience different things. And maybe you don't need to go to university immediately after high school in all cases. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking about the people right now who are graduating uh, while social distancing and talking about going to university in the fall where there won't even be in-person classes. I bet a lot of people are thinking of like, do I need to immediately register and pay stupid amounts of money to to learn online right now like Mm -hmm. at the end of the day what you get out of university hopefully you actually learn but a lot of it is just like to have a piece of paper at the end to make you qualified for jobs but it's also about the experiences of like going to class and meeting peers and research assignments that maybe you do in a group setting and people aren't going to necessarily have that so i totally understand that maybe the decision this year to delay or put a hold on that what might make more sense for people making mm. that decision and it's a really tough spot to be on so and maybe here's a interesting note to end on for the past three or four years you have done a simply tuition giveaway and it's something we'd like to continue doing in the future and this year even but does the fact that like school is happening remotely sort of should it change yeah. our approach to doing that this year i think we're really open to comments on this from the audience should we have a different approach to financially contributing to someone's education this year considering everything going on in the world yeah so i'll just recap for those of you who aren't aware every year i'd pay a couple people's tuition here in canada in canada but because i don't know if people are feeling more like apprehensive or weird or unsure about going to school that might be the same cost as it was before although you're not really getting the same experience is there any other way or different um, different way of approaching the tuition giveaway that we could do this year that would make more sense given the current context? Like, I'm just, I want to hear from you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm unsure what to do. I, I want to support people who want to go to school and need help. But I just, I don't know if maybe there's a better or a different way mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, we don't want to be donation shamed, right? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, Apologies to Video Game Donkey. He was going to come on and talk about the big Yoshi, but uh, we ran out of time. But uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this this convo about school, reminiscing about our high school experience. And one day you'll grow up to be adults just like us. (laughs) Just like us. Just as silly as we still are. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next Taco Tuesday. See y'all later. Bye. Bye.